So we all know this show gets weird sometimes, right? After all, nobody's a pro, so things can go sideways at a moment's notice for seemingly no reason. And, well, this contestant right here had every advantage, but blew a golden opportunity during a mystery box challenge. I'm talking about season three, when this home cook won a massive advantage, the opportunity to shop in the pantry first. Now, this dude set out to make a delicious rice pudding, but he was so engrossed in his search for the right ingredients that he forgot the most crucial one. Am I gonna get out of this one? I cannot believe that I forget the rice. Yeah, he forgot about the rice. You know, for the rice pudding, I'm talking about David Martinez. And this has to be the stupidest mistake a contestant's ever made. In episode 15, during the mystery box challenge, David impressed everyone with a spot prawn ceviche. That earns high praise from Joe and Ramsey alike. Not exactly a small feat. This landed him in the top three and ultimately led to him winning the challenge. Moving on to the savory to sweet hybrids invention test, David picked corn as his dessert ingredient. He decided to pay homage to his mother by creating a corn-based rice pudding. All good so far, right? But now we're caught back up. David dashed into the MasterChef pantry, gathering all the ingredients for his rice pudding, except the rice. It's pudding without rice. It was only after leaving the pantry that he realized how badly he'd messed up. Being that one of my competitors has grabbed rice and is not gonna use it. When he tried to fix it, the judges laid down the law. No return trips to the pantry. This would you, Christine? No, I don't, I'm sorry. Josh, do you have any rice? No rice. David scrambled to find rice, and luckily, Becky had a tiny amount that she was kind enough to hand over. However, the judges weren't too pleased. No, no, no not at this stage. I want a seventh chance of winning this competition. You don't start giving out your ingredients. He's a lucky, lucky boy. Ramsey swung by to check on David, emphasizing how much he owed Becky. You have this rice. You had better make this dessert the best dish you've cooked in this competition so far. But did he? Let's see. Eventually, David presented that corn and rice pudding he'd set his sights on, which he paired with salted caramel sauce. Unfortunately, things took a sour turn. Really, really unedibly disgusting. Brutal. Graham didn't mince words either, calling it one of David's worst creations. Ramsey was visibly disappointed too, especially considering his massive advantage. It's supposed to be in this dish. The corn, sir. I'm struggling to taste corn. In the end, his dish landed him in the bottom three, though he managed to survive elimination. But I don't know, I feel like he should have gone home in place of Felix. And, you know, I'm also reminded of this other time when things went south in season 6, episode 12. The crew received the news that they'd be split into two teams to prepare a family-style dinner for a very special family, hosted by Gordon Ramsay himself. It could be the Kardashians. Is it Prince William and Kate Middleton? God, I love this guy. So, to lead these teams, Derek and Claudia were chosen as the captains. Christopher found himself on Derek's team, specifically tasked with handling the pie crust for their chocolate mousse pie. As the cook progressed, frequent updates from Christopher indicated things were going. But his voice trembled. Chris, how those pies doing, dude? Going, going, going. Chris, I need that in the oven so fast. I know, I know. Yeah, no wonder he didn't add a well at the end of that going. Dude was on the struggle bus for sure. Fine, I swear. If it's fine, then why are we opening it? Chris, you know what, man? I need you to make pie crust. Derek couldn't have been more right when he said, Chris, you had one job. Pie crust. Chris, you have one job. Pie crust. But the crust was still undercooked, because he simply couldn't stop playing chicken with the oven. Derek stepped in, but Christopher kept protesting, as he wasn't ready to accept any amount of help whatsoever. Put it back in. Ah, I'm like, I just need a pie crust. Go, 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 we're losing heat in that oven. I know, give me a second. The tension ramped up as it was time for the family to vote blindfolded for their preferred meal, with the losers bracing themselves for the pressure test. As the contestants anxiously waited outside, the judges engaged with the diners. And here was the twist. It was none other than the contestants' own loved ones. 
The votes trickled in, building up to a pivotal moment. Derek's mom had the final say. And who did she choose? Red team! <laughs> oh, bummer. Fast forward to the dreaded pressure test, and there was yet another surprise in store. Despite losing, the judges excused Derek from the test, recognizing the solid effort he'd put into the lamp. With Derek safe in the embrace of the rafters, the rest of them were in for a challenge. The contestants had to cook gnocchi in a sage brown butter sauce. When it was time for the tasting, Ramsey was blown away by Nick's creation. He went as far as hailing it as the quintessential gnocchi. Back in there for more. Thank you. That's exactly the way to make gnocchi. Absolutely. Good job. Nick was looking real proud. Until Ramsey tasted Olivia's dish and found it superior to even Nick's own. Yours has gone beyond that. Touch more butter. It's not gonna kill you. Either way, both Nick and Olivia were safe, and this left Tommy and Christopher in the danger zone. However, Christina couldn't let Christopher's presentation slide. Point typically, you'll find the sauce in the outer edges of the plate so that when you're ready to dig into it. Strike one. The dumplings lacked both flavor and texture. Strike two. And then came Ramsey, questioning the purpose of the pathetic line of black pepper dust on Christopher's plate, which he considered artful, but Ramsey found utterly pointless. What is all that stuff? Yeah, it's just a little bit of cracked black pepper. But I thought it would just be, you know, a nice presentation. Then Christopher made the really dumb decision of rolling his eyes, which angered Christina, and rightly so. Rolling your eyes to the balcony while Gordon's tasting your dish, just to be clear, when we say we see everything, we mean it. God, what a brat. She then cuts straight to the point. Well, why are you here? I can hold that back door open for you. His behavior was inexcusable. Like my jaw was on the floor. We're open for you. We don't even have to taste on this. Don't be disrespectful. Christopher attempted to reply, but his words faltered. I have no idea what the overconfidence was about. It's not like he cooked his dish well. Ramsey revealed that during the cook, he noticed Christopher never tasted the dough mixture before blanching it. Way to go, dude. And according to Ramsey, this wasn't the mark of a master chef. Oh yeah, he was clearly unimpressed. How on earth are you expecting the end result to come out as a master chef quality dish? What a shame. And that was strike three. Anyway, let's jump to season 10. The challenge was set. The contestants would have to cook for a crowd of former MasterChef contestants and other VIP guests in just an hour, dishing out three superb creations. Sarah and Noah, the team captains, earned their spots from the previous week's skill challenge. Sarah took charge of the red team, the pineapple drinkers, while Noah rallied the coconut enjoyers for the blue team. The judges picked out the menu, assigning similar dishes to each team. The red team had their sights set on fried chicken drumsticks, beer-battered cod, and a bacon cheeseburger, while the blue team aimed to impress with fried chicken thighs, coconut-crusted cod, and a turkey burger. But amidst the chaos, Suba seemed to be lost in his own little world. What are you doing? So, is that on? No, the, the grill's not on. Oh, your grill's stone cold. He attempted to grill without the grill being on. I'm not even gonna expand on that and let you simmer in the sheer absurdity for a bit. Uh, I don't believe it's my fault, but that's not a good thing. Yeah, hey, big boy. Adding to the drama, Suba decided to wander around snacking in the midst of the challenge. Guys, our first big challenge, season big 10. Big time, big time. Two amazing teams. Right. Katara gave him a hell of an earful for getting in her way. Even Ramsey couldn't resist jumping in with a witty comment of his own. Dude, you like dog always in the middle of the road. Get the out of there. And of course, there was more. Hey, hey yes, go sir. water my plants. Uh -huh. Go water my plants in there, middle one. And the big palm tree as well. In the end, Noah's team clinched the win, although the judges labeled it an ugly win. Definitely not wrong there. Surprisingly, despite the victory, there was no immunity. Instead, the judges demanded a nomination for the upcoming elimination challenge. And to the surprise of literally nobody, Noah nominated Suba, which still managed to cause a bit of an uproar. Suba protested, claiming it wasn't fair. 
but with team members and Ramsey alike pointing out how badly he'd squandered the challenge, it seemed like Suba was heading towards some serious repercussions. Now, I don't get the overwhelming hate he gets. Suba might not be the traditional MasterChef fit, but there was something special about his culinary journey. What's refreshing about him is his lack of drama or negativity. He's never shown any mean-spiritedness or pettiness. Instead, he exuded positivity and support, making him a genuinely nice person to root for in the midst of the intense competition. Still, I'm not about to let the way he handled this particular challenge slide. But who would have thought that we'd witness a white Italian guy schooling a Lebanese woman on falafel? Well, Joe made it happen. In the vegan challenge in season 12, Amanda shared that her Lebanese-influenced culinary style leaned towards vegetarian fare. Her standout dish, the falafel, was a tribute to a recipe passed down from her grandmother. But along came Joe. It's not about what he said, but how he said it. That patronizing tone left many viewers feeling outraged, accusing Joe of being full of microaggressions. And honestly, they're not wrong, right? He's shown some shocking disdain towards non-European cuisine, something I've pointed out pretty frequently. For example, in season four, Bethy made a plate of Szechuan noodles with wild mushrooms in the Mushroom Elimination Challenge. Graham said that the dish didn't shine due to its lack of focus on the mushrooms. Meanwhile, Ramsey pointed out an excess of sesame oil and a bit of a one-dimensional flavor. All valid criticism so far. But then Joe came in and practically flipped the table. Honestly, how dare he? Though I'm content to leave things there, considering I already tore into Joe for this particular moment of BS in a recent video of mine. Go check it out if you haven't. So I want to move on to Season 4, Episode 4, where a disaster of insane proportions unfolded after the Mystery Box Challenge was revealed. The contestants would dive straight into the elimination round, and this time, the mission was to master the delicate langoustine in a mere 60 minutes. So Howard, thinking big, decided on a hell of a gamble. He dropped a citrus salad bomb with what he called a champion vinaigrette. Well, let's see how that goes for you, champ. Now, Ramsey slammed Howard's dish, saying he should have ditched half the plate and those three lemon slices. What is it, please? I made a citrus salad with a champion vinaigrette. But here comes the real shocker. Howard was proud of his creation. His dish was all about that vinaigrette, but the judges weren't buying it. Ramsey asked if there was any vinaigrette on the plate in the first place, claiming that all he saw was regret. To make things worse, Joe and Aron confirmed that there was zero vinegar in the dish. No, sir, I see no vinegar. Chuck? This is a joke. Ramsey wasn't amused. He claimed that the dish was a joke and flat out refused to put it in his mouth. Well, just like this viewer said, Howard had messed up big time. And honestly, not much more needs to be said than that. Plain and simple. Meanwhile, Joe didn't pull any punches either, as expected. He went all in, telling Howard that he'd vouched for him, hyped up his skills. And now, he was faced with the disappointment of the century. Joe then immediately floated the idea of giving Howard the boot, practically putting him out of his misery. But that never happened. At least, not in this episode. The judges decided to give him another chance or five before they let him go. But not all viewers were happy with this decision. Most of them called out the show for making biased decisions. MasterChef waits for no one, and certainly not for lackluster vinaigrettes and questionable citrus salads. But what about those handful of other episodes he was in? Well, stay tuned to the channel. I have a feeling I'll be back with more Howard sooner rather than later. As of now, though, I think he needed more time and a lot of practice to perfect his skills. Two mistakes in a row. There's a big chance I'm not going to make it through this. Now, when it comes to serving up shitty dishes, Howard was far from the only one. Well, make way for the one and only, Sasha. Ramsey took one look at Sasha's dish before dropping one of the most nasty comments he's ever made. No. With the grits, I'll say 55. Yeah, not exactly the type of review you'd put up on the fridge. And what was the star of this questionable show? 
langoustine on top of cheese grits. What is that? That is the langoustine on top of cheese grits. God, put the poor langoustine out of its misery already. Anyway, it took a while to find it on the plate, but eventually Ramsay spotted it. But turns out, Sasha might have bitten off a little more than she could chew. Literally. On top of the cheese grits. Oh, there they are there. And before you knew it, Ramsay dropped his verdict. It's a combination, it's just all wrong. It was time for Joe, and before he dug into the dish, he posed a pretty valid question. I was with a langoustine, and you give me this. Sasha had no idea how to react. However, she remained resilient and maybe a bit too optimistic that things would turn out okay. What she said next must have felt like a stab in the back. <laughs> this is probably worth 55 cents. I guess she forgot that she was only a contestant on the show. Definitely not the most appropriate position for humor. And Joe wasn't amused. When is he ever? Thanks for nothing. Yep, and he didn't even bother tasting it. In the blink of an eye, it went right into the trash. This dish spelled the end of Sasha's MasterChef journey. But like Magic Dreamer mentioned, it honestly could have gone either way between her and Howard. And yeah, those big dreams she had turned into a hell of a nightmare. Like, what did that poor langoustine do to you? But here comes a dish from season two which can only be described as a hot mess. And this time, the spotlight is on Angel, a contestant who, unfortunately, couldn't hack it with French cuisine. A huge dagger for an aspiring chef. So it's starting to bubble, and five minutes left. I still gotta put my in, and then I have to bake it still. As Angel nervously laid out her dish, she was far from confident. And well, she was right to be nervous. Heaping pile of mess. And then the burning question. Arone couldn't help but wonder why Angel was so disappointed. And Angel made her thoughts very clear. You look angry. What happened? It was supposed to be a custard to go inside my tart. Arone dug deeper into the awkward moments, asking what exactly Angel had presented. And Angel was barely able to mumble out a reply. Tart, but... Where's the tart? Uh... But there was a significant problem with her explanation. Where was the tart? Ramsay was curious to find out, but Angel had left it back at her table because it simply didn't live up to her expectations. With the main component missing, her own had nothing more to say than this. Self, so I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Sorry, Angel. Aron swapped places with Ramsay, and although he was willing to give it a taste, Angel cut in by saying something she really shouldn't have. I already know it's a disaster. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. It's like the kind of dessert that give you for a month. If you ask me, that was a hell of a bad move. It sounded like she was asking for trouble, and well, that's exactly what she got. Because what Ramsay said next was brutal. I'm more embarrassed for you, because I think deep down inside, you can do a lot better. And then came the empathetic twist no one saw coming. Ramsay felt bad for Angel, because he knew what she was capable of, and he was certain that she had more in her. But eventually, the final decision was made. By the end of the round, Angel's time in the MasterChef kitchen had run out. Your time is done inside the MasterChef kitchen. Please take your apron off. But something that happened during season three's run was even worse. Episode 10 brought a challenge that was intended to separate the culinary wheat from the chaff. And well, it did what it was supposed to. Yeah pizza. An easy dish to do well, but a hard dish to perfect. Enter Mike. Hopeful, but not exactly proud of what he managed to bring to the table. And what was his strategy, you ask? Well, he put all his faith into his pizza stone, hoping it'd save the day. As he showed off his creation, the judges weren't exactly reaching for the confetti. And Mike ended up blurting something out that would definitely land him in trouble. This is honestly starting to become a little bit of a theme, huh? But I hope that I've done enough with the pizza stone that- Arone remarks that Mike had found a way to make the dish look dehydrated. Take a minute and just try to imagine a dry pizza. I bet you can't. Either way, it sounded like a slightly more polite way of asking Mike to pack his things and get out. It's like that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's like you found a way to make it like dehydrated. But Mike, wasn't willing to give up. 
He tried to explain his lapse in his memory, but Ramsey wasn't having it. How can a stone beat you? Mike's excuses were all but laughed out of the room. And that's when, in a moment that I'm still not able to wrap my head around all these years later, Mike admitted that he had completely blacked out during the cook. But the judges weren't having it. All you had to do was take one look at Joe. His face said it all. And then came the ominous prediction. Yep, at this point, it was certain. Mike had a good idea about what his fate would end up being. Hope there's not a blank space at your cooking station tomorrow. By the end of the tasting, Mike had kinda accepted. Good job, Becky. You know, but what can I do, you know? Yeah, he hoped somebody, anybody, would screw up worse than him. But I mean, name literally anyone else who could cook up a dry pizza but him. I can't. In the end, the verdict was clear. Mike's pizza stone experiment didn't cut it. He was eliminated that night. Round two. Thank All you right? very much. No, it's a big Thank deal. You. All right, you did great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what a shame things had to go that way. But, well, if you've got any burning opinions on any of the strange stuff I covered here, get in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications too. But until next time, go ahead and check out this next video right here.